So the first thing you want to do is go in your house, figure out what you have. If you have a PF Sense custom wireless router, then you probably know how to do this. Um, if you have maybe a Linksys device, um, Netgear, they all come in all different shapes and sizes. It just depends on what you have. Maybe it's something from your ISP, like you know a Comcast or Xfinity box, and you can do that through the app. But unfortunately, I don't have anything like that to to uh, demo and set up for you guys. Um, but we do have a basic Netgear and a base, basic Linksys. Um, the wireless router. So let's go ahead and get into these devices. I'm going to show you how to log into the interface and uh, set up this port forwarding. So the first thing you want to do is, like I said, find that wireless router device in your house. You're going to want to have a laptop or your desktop or something on the same network as that device because what you're going to want to do is log into the admin page of this uh, wireless router. So we're going to look at this neck gear right here. We're going to flip it over and you can see we have certain credentials um, and you can see router login here on the back. So that router login is telling us that the default IP is 192.168.1.1 and then the default login is admin password. So that tells us right away how to get, in, how, how to get into that web interface, the credentials for that web interface and once we get into that part, that's like half the battle, right? Once you log into your wireless router, then we can go into the advanced section usually and set up that port forwarding. So now let's get on the computer. Once we are hardlined into this wireless router, you can be on the Wi-Fi. So if your Wi-Fi connected to it, that's perfectly fine. But in our case, we're going to be hardlined in. And you can see we're in port one here on the back. Um, so let's go ahead and dive right into it and get this going. Okay, so before we even get started on setting up port forwarding and everything, the machine you're hosting the game server on, make sure you're on that machine. And really the first thing we need to do is set a static IP to it. So we need to get into control panel, go to network and internet, and then network and sharing, and do change adapter settings. And we're gonna right click on our ethernet adapter, go to properties. Now if you're on a laptop with Wi-Fi and you don't have you know, a dedicated NIC or anything, even though I would highly recommend that, um, but let's say you're not, then you would do the same steps for the wireless NIC, but please use Hardline when you're trying to host a game server where you're gonna have more than one person join. Uh, in any case, go to version uh, four protocol, go to properties, and we're gonna go ahead and type in IP address. Now, to know what IP address to set, you need to open up command prompt. So you can go to start, type in CMD, load up command prompt here, and we're gonna type in a simple command, just IP config, because that's gonna tell us what kind of network we're on. And this is uh, considered a local network. So it's 192.168.1.1. Uh, that's going to be kind of like a standard network that you're going to see. You might see 192.168.2.5, you know, something along those lines. Or you might even see something that says 10.1.10.1, right? Those are still local networks. So what we need to do, go to our configuration here. And then uh, to make sure we set a static IP that's not already on the network, Let's go ahead and use the ping command and just type in, we're gonna set a static IP of 1.20. So we wanna ping that address. And if nothing is coming back, most likely there's nothing on that IP address, right? But to be on the safe side, you can uh, download something called like IP scanner and you can actually do a full on network scan to see if there's anything on that IP address. And another thing to do is your uh, router has something called a DHCP range. I'm not going to get into that in this video, but if you go in there, you can change the DHCP range so it never assigns an IP address at that IP. But like I said, I'm not going to go into that right now. Let's go ahead and continue. So now that we know there's nothing at that IP address, now we can go in here and just type in our static IP. So we're going to do, that's fine, um, 255, slash 24. And like I said, if you don't know networking, just try and follow what I'm doing, but replicate it for your network. Um, I'm just sending a, a Google's DNS and then cloud filters DNS. You can choose uh, something else or maybe your router's IP or your uh, ISP's DNS. If you don't know any of that, then just put in the Google and uh, cloud filter. You'll be fine. So once you have this information in there, go ahead and hit OK and then close. And then now we are set for a static IP. Now to make sure this is working, you can actually hit the up arrow ping. Now it's pinging back and you know that your static IP is set and the network can communicate to it. And to make sure it's also working, to open up your web browser. Make sure you can get to the internet. Do a speed test. Uh, make sure that's all working. And then, uh, so once you have a static IP set, now we need to modify our batch file. And like I said, this is an example for CSGO, but this is going to be pretty much uh, the same thing for Unturn or any other game server. But I'm just doing CSGO as an example. 
So let's go ahead and edit our run file here. We're going to use Notepad++ to edit it. Um, and you can see um, our IP is set for 192.168.1.20. Perfect. So that's what we need to know. Um, we're going to need to know this port because we want to go into Windows Firewall. So like I said, we, you got to do so much before you even get to the router part, right? You need to make sure you have a static IP. You need to make sure your game server is set for that same static IP you just set. Now we need to go into Windows Firewall and then open up that port. So then once we open up that port on the router, it can it's also open on the Windows machine. So then it, the communication can be allowed through that port, right? So open up Windows Firewall, go to Advanced Settings. Once Advanced Settings opens up, we're going to go to Inbound Rules because, like I said, there's going to be an inbound uh, port. So right-click, New Rule. We're going to select Port, and we just type in that 27015. Now, if you are doing an unturned server, I know for a fact you have to do, I think, three ports. So it's going to look something like that, 27015 to 27015. Uh, 17 and that's right why because that particular game needs three ports to communicate and you got to do it for TCP and UDP so keep that in mind so for CSGO you just need the one port which is 27 or 15 um, and hit next allow that connection and then we'll do CSGO um, TCP so we know what that is now if you're doing multiple servers uh, we can just edit this real quick now if you're doing multiple let's say you got uh, three CSGO servers well you can simply just Type in, uh, you know, one's on 15, 16, 17, right? And you can just do all three ports, and, I, and this will open up all three ports. And then you got to make sure on the wireless router you do the same thing. But in this case, we're just doing the one port, so 27, uh, 27 15, and then we need to do another one for UDP. So, because a lot of game servers communicate on UDP protocol, because uh, it doesn't, I'm not going to get into it, but it doesn't verify the uh, packets as it come in, so it's a lot faster tra trans uh, transmission, right? Um, so we're going to do that same port. But we selected UDP, so we'll hit next, next, next. Uh, we'll do CSGO, uh, UDP. So you know in the future uh, what ports are open. And then if you don't use that anymore, you can simply you know disable those rules, right? Um, so you can uh, do that in the future. So now we are ready to go into that router. You see all these steps you have to do, and you want to make sure everything's done correctly. So now let's go ahead and close Windows Firewall out. Now let's figure out, well, how do I get into my wireless router now? So I can open up the ports on the firewall. So let's go ahead and do that same thing, IP config. Now, what is your default gateway? Nine times out of 10, this default IP here is gonna be your wireless router login. So go ahead and uh, remember that IP address. So let's go to our web browser now, and we're gonna put in that IP address for our gateway there. So the 192.168.1.1, and hit enter. Now in most cases, hopefully not, but in most cases, your default login is gonna be simply admin, admin. So if it's not admin, admin, then it's gonna be admin, password. Now hopefully, it's not either of those and it's something that you've already changed, but like I said, if you're a, a noob to this, then it's gonna be admin, 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 password, or look at the bottom of your wireless router or the ISP modem that comes into the house. Look at that, because most likely that's gonna give you your wireless um, ID and it's gonna give you the default login to your wireless router, which is you're going to need. If you don't know what it is and you're and it's not on the bottom of the wireless router, then your only thing to do is to hard reset that wireless router, unfortunately. But hopefully you don't have to do that. So once you get in, every wireless router is going to be different. So like, for example, this is what Netgear's interface looks like. The Dell is going to be different. Lynx is going to be different. Um, TP-Link is going to be different. different. Hopefully it's going to be something similar to this. Now, right away, you don't really see like, okay, port forwarding. I don't really see a link for that or anywhere because it's usually not standing out that much. So what you need to do is just go in. If you're logged into a Netgear, go to advanced settings. You just want to look for something that just says port forwarding, right? So let's see, is it in setup? You know, you just kind of kind of have to browse to see where, where it might be, right? So um, in this case, I'm going to, I believe it's an advanced setup. Yep, there we go. So like I said, this is a kind of advanced thing, so that's why normal people don't really modify these settings, usually. So what we're looking for is port forwarding, port triggering, but we're looking for port forwarding is the word we're looking for. And we found it here. Now, 
what you want to make sure is you remember that port number that we that we just opened up right so you need to remember that and what ports and tcp and udp and all that good stuff now here you have a drop down of all these quick different ports like ftp some people open up ftp that's port 21 uh, but in our case it's csgo but i don't see csgo here so you're like okay well now i'm stuck no you just need to add a custom service so click on this add custom service button here so we're going to add a custom service to the wireless router now so the service name we're going to name it uh, csgo um, and then uh, tcp udp perfect uh, it allows you to select both at one time which is awesome if if it doesn't let you select it at the same time and you can only do tcp then what you need to do is create one for tcp and then create another one for udp all right so like i said in our case we're going to select both tcp udp and our port is the 27015 but you can see for an example if let's say you know like i said we had those three servers you would do 27015 uh, to 27017 with the little dash there you can see they give you an example of how to do that but in our case we're just doing the one port because that's all we need right uh you use the same port range for internal port yep that's perfectly fine now the, here's the important part internal ip address so this is basically telling the router if someone is trying to connect to your external ip connect on this port where is it going to go on the local network right so i like netgear i mean it, it's like here's this this is the static ip that we sent for the machine that's pretty cool that it automatically does that but like i said if you don't have that option most routers don't have that option you just manually put it in 192.168.1.20 because that's the static ip we set for that local machine so once you got that in there go ahead and apply now we successfully open up port 27 or 15 from the open internet to our local internal ip address which is our computer and it's running that game server right so let's go ahead and run that game server so you can see our game server is loading up here and now in theory if you did everything correctly anyone will be able to connect to the server now to see if that works or not you'd have to connect to it right well I, i'm not going to show you my public ip because you really don't want to give that information out especially if it's your home network just because ddos you worst case scenario so you really don't want to give that information out unless if it's a friend or whatever but in most cases it's not a big deal because nine times out of ten you don't have a static ip for your main network um and it's just dhcp so your ip address is going to change next week anyway right so it's not really sometimes not that big of a deal but what you need to do is just go to something like speed test or what is my ip dot dot net or dot com and you can see what your external ip address is and then you give that information to your friend or whoever's trying to connect to your server, right? Okay, so just to give you an example, um, I just put up what is myip.com here. And this is not a my IP, my IP address, but it's an IP address through my VPN. So this is the IP address you would basically give your uh, friend or someone that wants to join the server. Now, you want to make sure you're not on a VPN or that might screw things up. So you need to give them your actual public IP address and then then they will be able to connect to your game server so let's go ahead and test it right now so we're going to go and open up csgo here and let's give this a test run to see if we can uh get this rolling all right we've launched our csgo game client here we're going to open up our console which you don't if you don't know what that is you go into your settings to enable it but um this is the fastest way to connect to any uh, external game server so just type in the word connect space the ip address so my IP address is going to be uh, blocked out here because, again, I don't want to show that to everyone online. But we're going to go ahead and type in the IP address, and you do colon 27015, which is the port for that game server. Now, if it's just 27015, that's the default port, so you can just literally type in connect space the IP address. But if it's on a different port, then you got to do colon and then whatever the port number is to connect. So once you got that IP address in there, we're going to get, hit enter, and then it's going to launch and connect us to that game server now you can also go to the community server browser list and find your server but that's going to take a lot longer to do that i just like going through the console there and just typing in connect the ip address port and then you get connected right away and you can see our game server is working so we'll just do a quick demo here just make sure everything is working but as long as you don't get a connection issue then um you should be good to go now keep in mind if uh you go to tab and you see that you have zero ping that is fine. Um, it's because you're hosting the server locally and of course you're connecting to it locally, um, which you can connect to it if you're on the same uh, subnet as that server. You can connect to it via that 192.168.1.20.
Um, so you can connect to it to that IP address, but everyone else would need to use that external IP. Uh, just so you know, if it is hosted locally, you can connect to it via the local IP. But anyone else that needs to connect to it, you need to make sure they use the external IP address, which is what is going to be on whatismyip.com, and then of course whatever port number that game server is on. Hope this video was helpful, you guys. Please leave them in any comments below, and let me know if there's anything you need help with.